Okay, and we're back with another exciting episode of E Town Live. Twitch's most. Oh, wait, I got. Only, I wrote it down in my hand. E eclectic and. Now this joke sucks. You know what it is. You know what the three E stand for. I'm, of course, your host, Eric. It stands... No, you go ahead and do your joke. No, it actually stands for. Good joke, good joke. I'm, of course, your mayor, Eric. Last name, a uh, new name will come in the future, working on that. And, of course, with me is Robo, as you just heard. You want to give us another Tazism? I don't think anyone played after uh, Wrath of Cortex. I mean, Cortex. What was the fourth one that sucked? Was yeah, that, it was uh, Wrath of Cortex, unless you're, you know, counting, say, Crash Bash and shit. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to finish it tonight, because uh, if memory serves correct, we pretty much could have finished this thing in two streams, but as y'all recall, around October, the stuff happened. No need to say anything more about that, so, well, we're here now. Let's finish this thing off. You know, it's funny actually, I don't know if I ever mentioned it back when we were originally playing, but my first introduction actually was Crash 2, was one of the first games I collected for the series, even though I was aware of Crash beforehand because of obviously seeing the ads and Nick Magazine and all that, but I always really wanted to really play though Twin Sanity because I don't know, I just love that game's crazy <laughs> sense of humor. Uh, I started with Crash 2, then I got Crash 1, and everything kind of just sort of followed after that. Damn it. <sighs> and yes, I actually did play Twin Sanity. It was a rental from fucking Blockbuster Video. I mean, not Blockbuster, we never had money for Blockbuster. Uh, Hollywood Video, I should say. The superior rental shop, anyways. For anyone who might be thinking otherwise. And ah, so kind of. Oh, you. No, first. no, you go ahead. So kind of like how we had movie gallery up here for a while until it just ended up going kaput, and then we made we got a whole bunch of shit when that that store was closing. Practically, my entire GameCube collection we got from there. I remember one, this one weird detail about that trip to uh, Hollywood for the rental. Uh, it was a late, it was, I remember going very late at night because I think it was Thanksgiving weekend or something. I don't know, I asked my brother, but I don't think he, no, he has his headphones plugged in because we got a Roku TV so he can just listen to that on the app. And he just gave me the middle finger, fuck you too, cunt. It's bad enough I'm mentioning you on my stream, go bugger someone else. Fuck. But yeah, Twin Sanity. Uh, God, if any game needed a remastering, it's that one. And also all the, and maybe even putting in a bunch of the old shit, shit that they were going to do, but never got around to, because there was going to be a lot more with just like <sighs> a whole bunch of other dimensions and shit that they would have gone to in there. For me, the most necessary thing is we got to get Spiral Mouth back to do the soundtrack. I will not have it any other way. That is essential. Because, like, <laughs> I may have only played that game for a very short period of time, but the... That is ingrained in my mind. It is ingrained in everyone's brain. Even if you haven't played it, you're... you're the, in the, in the recesses, bleh, recesses of your mental palace, there is a, a geef of a stormtrooper thrusting... Damn it. 
God, what happened to me? Last time I was playing, last time we played Crash, I was kind of tearing ass through this thing. And you're just rusty. You gotta get back in the flow. Which is funny, because at that point, the last time, when we last played, okay, when we started streaming, it's the last time we've played Crash 2 was a few years ago when I was just trying to fill out one of those uh, media I enjoyed throughout the year things, which failed horribly because I just kind of forgot. Damn it. Fuck you. Ugh. I would do that, do one of those, but at the same time, I keep forgetting, and me trying to post anything, pure and simple, seems to be like, oh, hey, genius, you, you have all these things that you could do and post shit on. This is even a problem with me for my own art as well, so, uh... Damn it. Oh, what? Come on. I was underneath the thing. Anyways, yeah. Side note, I actually remember um, seeing mods for specifically... A mod specifically for this stage that had a, like, playable Sonic on it. Oh, yeah. One person who's actually figured out how to do it, but I think they're the only person so far to crack it. Or at the very least, they haven't shared their mod tools around widely. I forget how, how long ago that was, but... It's very geez. recent. I think like last year, or, or within at least. Because I remember seeing like someone like... What was it? I think it was Pong and something else they made using in-game code or whatever. I also recall that somebody made basically um, a recreation of like the Sonic 2 special stage, but basically with this in Crash 2, and the music was even the Sonic CD special stage, Japanese version. Damn it! Oh, fuck off! God, thank God we're not any bigger than we are, or else this would, I would be getting a whole montage of me fucking up the f most simplest shit in this game. Had uh, the somewhat good perks of being a no-name streamer. I mean, you could be me. You could be me trying to play Pizza Tower the other time and just uh, botching his chances at getting a freaking higher. <gasps> that was a little hell <laughs> scream. <laughs> Actually, no it was funny because that it was and wasn't because it sounded like a different recording. Like no, it, it was like the something... Wilhelm scream, but it was just pitched. Oh. Which, by the way, I mentioned this in the server, but you can now download the Wilhelm scream off of freesound.org, which is what I use for uh, whenever I need sound effects for my uh, videos. So now, by technicality, the original Wilhelm scream is public domain. You know, that is some that is some evil knowledge I should note. The thing is, it is the original, original version, so you know, quality is kind of rough. So you're gonna have to really put in the work if you want to use it. But still, it's free. <laughs> Actually, uh, while I'm mentioning this, uh, pro tip to anyone who uses freesound.org: make sure you search with Creative Commons Zero. That's the one that's absolutely public domain. You don't don't gotta do no credit in or nothing. That's a video editing tip for you right there. <sighs> Fuck. I don't know why my inclination is just to run forward. Like I said, man, you're playing Crash, not Pizza Tower. It's less... Uh, well, but I had some good movement forward. right there. How about that move? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Oh, fuck your dad. <laughs> Man, I don't know how... I, I've been trying to get over a new catchphrase in my head, but I don't think that one's gonna take off. Because I've been thinking about it, E-Town needs, e needs catchphrases. 
But the thing is, I already have a good one from when we played Duck Game. You remember the one, don't you? Which one was that? We were talking about Shad, man. And I said everyone, horrible people should die in horrible ways. Oh, I mean, that one's a classic, I would have to say. See, usually I associate you usually saying the C word. Yeah, but uh, I do need to, I do need to uh, spice up, put some more variety into my words, which I speak say. What are you trying to speak fucking, uh, freaking, uh, of course now that I'm trying to make the joke, I completely forget about it. Uh, Strong bad? Tree, tree, no, tree speak from fucking Bionicle. The freaking, um, what is the freaking, what is that section of Matanui that is just like completely grassy and all that? I'm completely blanking. Greenland. Ah, uh, yes. You know, I, I got. Damn I gotta it! Search. Hang on. Fuck! Le Matoran, Le Matoran tree speak. That's what it's called. When you just basically take oh two words and just mash them together that both mean the same thing, like um. That's a few good examples. Far distance. Wow. Happy cheer. Wow. Jungle song. Old bone. So wait, is jungle song just drum and bass? Jungle song is the sounds of birds and beasts of the jungle. Oh my god, I'm. Just... What is going on with me tonight? I should be good at this. I'm good at games. I admit, you want to know why I say kink fetish? Because of that? Yes, it is totally derived from freaking tree speak. Oh, well, then again, I guess I do a little bit of tree speak myself because uh, sometimes I'll say jabroni marks or jabroni cunts, and they basically mean the same thing. Yeah, that tracks. Gotta put over Tree Speak so much that we get a Gen 3 of Bionicle. I don't think we're ever gonna have that much pull that Lego will listen to us. Well, Besides, first we gotta happy. have them pull another Galdor. You say that as if I would be against that. Uh, okay then. We have to do another. What was that fucking firefighter guy or whatever that was what really killed the company? Almost Jack Stone, if I recall. <laughs> yeah. They need to do another one of those, then we can push them to do Bionicle. See, the thing is, it sucks, because in this era where we have a lot of, like, ah, here's nostalgic callback or new reboot of a franchise that we have plenty of, you have plenty of space to do uh, Bionicle, a new era of Bionicle. But they tried though, but I guess it wasn't the money maker they thought it'd be. Which sucks because I do hear good things about the G2 era of Bionicle. The only reason I never actually was able to collect much of it is because you know, Lego sets cost a lot. Yeah, I know. I I had a small Lego fixation again, like a few years ago. I bought a firehouse set that was like sixty-four dollars. Oh, I was work. I was a stupid Jeroni Mark that day. See, that was me um, last year. I think it was it was my birthday gift actually. They had this Speed Champions line of Lego sets, where it's just like a lot of famous cars and all that. And one of them was the Aston Martin DB5 from 007, complete with a little Bond minifigure. Nice. Uh, now I'm reminded of that Lego 2K drive that's coming out and how it could have been good, but we know it won't be. What sucks is that I know that there's gonna they're gonna put the DLC for Lego Racers 2 on there in one. It's like, you wanna get freaking Rocket Racer? You gotta pay out the ass for that! Yeah, don't get worked like a jabroni. Just go back and 
play like a racers one and two especially one because one fucking i fucking hate so too. hard damn it <laughs> come on eric stop doing this oh, you're smarter than this i swear to god once the whole um ps1 rollback is finally implemented into fight cade Mm, we gotta have a Lego Racers night. Arr. I mean, we could just do that in fucking uh, Mendefen, so we need to do four players. Nah, true. But at the same time, it being cleaner and all that. Besides, um... Oh, I have a Come on, I jumped on uh, that! Specifically, I'm calling out mm. Miles because... One of these days, me and them, I will prove myself to be the better Lego racer. Ooh. Oh my god, I'm just gonna cut this entire thing when I upload to YouTube. That was every time you just barely dodge one. I could just also imagine crashes, butt cheeks clenching at the same time. Just saying a lot, honestly, considering you don't, you don't got much butt cheeks going on. <laughs> Speaking of being a dummy, hey kids, uh, if you have a job and you got, uh, it's tax time, you should, do, you should do your taxes. Because I did today, well, at the release, I finally put on my big boy pants and went down to Brooklyn to meet with my mom's uh, tax person to hand in my W-2 form. So. I already got that taken care of, which is good actually considering that it was like right next to it's in the library that's literally right next to where the post office oh, is. The Ooh. Yeah. I'm just hoping. Like, I'm not. Like, here's the thing. I would have been so much fucked if. Okay, so, uh, a quick context for. So everyone knows here. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I mean, you can tell by just looking at the fucking stream. Did you not see that opening standby screen I made? It's fucking great. And uh, last year, before I got the day job, because as it turns out, being a mayor doesn't really bring in much capital, who would have thought, uh, I did a lot of freelancing and took payments via PayPal. Oh, shit. Uh, hold on, let me focus on this. And uh, the last year before that, they announced that they're going to change some fucking law that says... When you make this amount of money on PayPal, you gotta do taxes. And, uh, I hit that threshold amount of 600 fucking bucks. And I was- and I was staring down the gun of, oh shit, am I really gonna have to do fucking taxes next year? Which, I- I'll let you know. I ended up doing because the day job. In the W-2 form. But thankfully, I did not have to file taxes for my PayPal because, oh my god, I would have been fucked so hard with that. Because they changed it at the last minute to be like, okay, we're going to give you all another year before we implement this to give you all more time to figure it out. One of the few good things the federal government has ever done. Anyways, don't be a putz. Do your taxes. Now and forever. Fingers crossed I get a decent ass refund. Taking on Neocortex, that's one thing go to go up against, but the IRS, no, thank you. Even the Joker doesn't fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Ooh. Oh god! I thought I would have had more time. Being a scientist, Shit. this guy's got some fucking arm strength. But then again, it was revealed in Crash. Um, it was revealed in Crash 3 that those guys are like. They're like just synthetic. clones. Yeah. Damn it! Yeah, now I listen closer. Now I hear the Wilhelm. Damn it! <gasps> Come on, are we at the end yet? Oh my god! Jesus. Oh, thank God. Uh, we do not need to talk about this level ever again. Shame. It had 69 boxes. Not nice. Very not nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the crystal. Come on, Crash. We gotta get going. All right. The jetpack levels now. Oh, let's see if I remember this shit cake. First, we'll just check something really quick. Well, yes. I got. No, go back! <laughs> Fuck, I'm not even gonna bother with the box. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, the only joke I can make at the moment is that, uh, is a deep cut joke to one freaking section of, from Russia, the PS2 from Russia with Love game. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how many people have even really fucked around with the Bond era PS2 games aside from me. Uh, for a while I was trying to mod my PS2, and one of the methods was, I forgot which one, but there was an exploit on one of the Bond games that if you loaded, if you disc swapped it or something, you could like, load fucking, uh, the ISO loaders and shit like that. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, but uh, I stopped like two steps in before because because I was like, yeah, no, I'm not smart enough to do this, and I'm probably gonna fuck up this PS2, so I didn't do it. But that's okay, cause now I got a supercomputer and I can just emulate shit. Oh, it's with Agent Under Fire, apparently. Yeah, actually, here's the reason why I I ended up not going through with it because I botched the first one. The first CD got a bad scratch because I fucked up the timing. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, lesson learned. Or I should have done the smart thing and fucking send it to someone who knows how to install mod loaders and crap. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna continue. Joke. Shut up. Fucking game. Jokes on. Well, at least uh. It's not as bad as me when I destroyed an N64 by loading too many Game Shark cheats into it. How did you? Do, how did that work? Okay, explain. <laughs> okay, um, this was the first N64 that we had picked up, and it was um during this time where we found a whole bunch of it at like Goodwill and all that. You know, back when you could actually go to your local Goodwill, find some decent retro stuff there for pretty decent prices. Um, what then happened is we at some point found a Game Shark cartridge for it. And I still have that cartridge um, in my shelf. So there were a bunch of preloaded cheats specifically for Mario 64. So I thought, you know what? Let me fuck around with it. 
there was like Mario oh, running goodness. backwards, like walking up hills, a whole bunch of that shit. And also, ooh, let's ooh. see. Oh, yeah, the levels, the level select ah. cheats. Oh, no. Ooh. Damn it! Thanks so much for it being a leap of faith. Oh, I can do this. But, but uh, yeah, it was um, just a whole bunch of cheats available to to me, and I thought, you know what? Let me load up some of these at the same time. <laughs> so, me being dumb, I decided to load up like five different fucking cheats at the same time that screws with Mario's movement to the point where then. Uh, the game went crazy whenever I went up a hill until it then just froze right I there. Go away. Fuck it. And then afterward, I tried booting the game back up. Didn't work. I tried it with the game shark and without the game shark. Oh, you actually work. killed the cart? I no, not the cart. The system. Oh come on! That was bullshit. But how? What? Jesus Christ! What the hell's wrong with you, dude? Yeah, yeah. I can add a freaking um, an N64 to my fucking kill count. What else did you kill? Do you really want to know? Do you really want to know? Sure, but I guess I can share something that I did that was N64 adjacent. Oh, please do share. So famously, I. Before I went all in on streaming instead of doing YouTube videos, I oh fuck fuck fuck, fuck. I Ooh. was well doing YouTube videos or at least trying to do YouTube videos uh, reviews of obscure fighting games and oh son of a bitch and one of the purchases that I made was an N64 and okay here's what I did I wanted a fight stick for the N64 right as crazy as it sounds hear me out. I mean, there's plenty of fighting games to warrant something like that. Yeah. So what I did was I took... I bought a second-hand N64 controller and... Get over here, fucker. And basically, I took the PCB and put on a bunch of connectors so that way it would connect to the buttons and stick on my fight stick. And it actually worked pretty good. Huh. The problem was... Uh, it made the memory card very fragile. Like, if you nudge it even a slice way, it might corrupt a file or whatever. Ooh. But, like, it actually worked, and I was, like, super proud of myself because, like, this is my first. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Ooh, nice. Oh, oh the... thank God. Okay, I think I redeemed myself for earlier this stream, but it actually worked. Okay, that was weird. But it actually worked, and I, I was super proud of myself because that was like my second soldering project. Uh, shame I ended up throwing it out because I just got rid of the N64. Damn. Yeah, it's a shame because uh, I actually did record and write script for a Clay Fighter video. Specifically, 363 and a third, which I actually bought a used copy of, too. I regret selling that one as well. I just really should have kept on to it. But anyways, what other consoles or computers did you fucking kill? <laughs> oh, well, if we're talking about a computer that I killed... Uh, oh, boy. Uh, this was what? the first time I had actually killed a computer. Though, I don't blame myself for this one, because I don't know what my folks were working on with it but i was trying to figure out how to install sonic my... damn it <laughs> you're you were doing a me and installing as many sonic fan games as you could ironically that wouldn't happen until later um let's see i think this was 2007 or something like that 2006 maybe i i'm estimating on this it was my old parents' old Windows XP computer. It was an what HP, nice and chunky, nice and big. And I found out that you could hook a camera 
onto it via USB. This is the first time I found out, oh, hey, a video camera could be linked up like that via USB. Uh, me being dumb little kid, USB was a technology that I'd still not entirely comprehended at the moment. Despite the fact that I messed around with a Logitech um, camera for the longest time. Yeah, the old little golf ball, right? Oh yeah, I think I have that around here somewhere. One of these days, I'm gonna pop on a voice chat with that old ass crusty thing and just just see how it runs. See if it can run on fucking Discord. So how did you end up killing the computer? When I plugged in the computer, the camera via USB, the thing just fucking bro just fucking crashed. I don't know how or why, but then. It just didn't want to work afterward. Again, I don't blame myself for this one because I don't know what else was that downloaded on that computer. And I didn't download games like that. I didn't download fan games and games like that yet. until, like, 2011. Again, yet. That's the second half of the story of the other computer that I have killed. But actually, um, if we're talking about other computer that I... I kind of killed because I think it was just incompatible with what I was doing. I was trying to upgrade my old Windows 98 computer. Why would you upload? Why would you upgrade? Uh, why, would you upgrade uh, why would you update 98? It was the best OS. Well, okay. One, I had Millennium, and two, it was XP. So, yeah, one of the best uh, operating systems. But at the same time, we can all agree XP is just as fucking good. Hmm. Like, come on. Tell me that a lot of us don't enjoy that nice green grass background that you associate XP with. <laughs> yeah, the vineyard. But, anyway, I did this because I had found an upgrade disc and all that. And I'm like, well, I want the kind of shit that my parent, that my mom and dad have on their computer. Because me being stupid, I thought, oh, that's how you get your computer to upgrade and oh. run more better games. <clears throat> Even though I had no idea that, no dummy, You didn't know about hardware. proper PC gaming. And to this day, I arguably still don't. But um, I know at least know a little bit more. Trust me, if the day ever comes and you decide to build your own computer, trust me, it's a lot easier than it seems. Although it would other... help to have some... Okay, if you ever decide to build a computer, let me know. I'll put you in contact with one of my boys who will help you out. My little brother actually did get himself a pretty decent pre-built set-top PC that, if ever comes to, he mentioned that maybe he could, like, tinker with it to upgrade it here and there. Basically, it's like a basis, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can, but, like... I just didn't... Anyways, continue with your story. But, yeah, that's, um... My little brother, but yeah, my little brother recently got an upgrade on his PC, and was like, "Oh, hey, maybe all of us can share." It's still his computer at the end of the day, but every so often I might ask, "Oh, hey, can I can I see it or can I try it out or something like that?" It's because so oh, fancy new technology, and the <laughs> you know how it is. Somebody has a new toy, you also want to take a look and yeah. see what it does too. Of course, but. Nonetheless, one of these days I am gonna upgrade my stupid fucking laptop into a proper set-top computer that can actually run shit. Fucking Budokai Budokai Tenkaichi 4 is on the horizon, and if I have to, I will get a higher-end anything. I I will get a higher-end system to play fucking Budokai Tenkaichi 4. And like, everything else we can do on stream, because. I, I say this with respect and understanding that not everyone on the team is as computer literate as I am. I am getting kind of tired of having to be the guy. No offense. It's alright. Besides, my little brother at least knows a little bit more as well, so I plan on asking him every so often if I need to. And to be honest, it's not like I'm completely illiterate to a point where it's just like, Duh, I don't know shit. I know a little bit. But I'm not as intelligent as say like Miles. Miles is way better at fucking computer shit than anything I could ever dream of. I imagine. Yeah. Well, then you can also ask them for help because they would obviously know. 
and again, if you, I could put you in contact with my guy Simon. He knows. But yeah. So, anyways, right let's now, get to the death. Come on, just quit belaboring the point. Let's just get there. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened with the with my original um, Millennium can compact computer, but it turns out oh, that on. I guess uh, something didn't really play nice with the operating system, and eventually it just didn't want to run. Maybe also it was just age, because at that point, the computer was like, what, over eight or something years old or something like that? But I had to bid it farewell, and um, eventually what I got as a hand-me-down was the Vista um, set-top computer that my parents had. And that, this one, is the one that, yes... <laughs> Me and my sister actually fucking killed by downloading too many other fucking games and all that on Desktop it. strippers, all the useless desktop faff, all the good um, stuff, all the viruses. Like shit like, uh, oh hey, Sumatori and all that from other freaking links and everything that probably we should keep a better, should keep a better eye on what we're downloading and eventually just shut the bed. Shut the bed. We were able to prolong its life a little bit longer through usage of like, um, freaking the safe mode and trying to recover some shit, but that thing was on its deathbed. Well, that's what I get for trying to find, uh, downloads for favorite, uh, Sonic songs I want. Oh my god, were you on LimeWire? <laughs> uh, no. It was other, it was other sites that uh, I K Let me guess, KH Insider, right? A bit of that, a bit of that, but, uh, oh, come on, at least, at least I now have, I now understand what to do and what not to do when it comes to that. Game over. So I'm just gonna think. You know, I actually yeah. did... Oh, no, sorry, you go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, I have at least three confirmed kills when it comes to computers. Uh, famously, I've gone on about how I might have killed a few computers at my old elementary school. Still unsure of, just... I uh, It's just more so I wouldn't be surprised if I did, but I know for a fact that I did end up killing one of my, one of my mom's old hand-me-downs from a friend. Ooh. It was an XP. I downloaded probably too much shit that I shouldn't have. Look, you're look. When you're a kid like me, you don't make good decisions on the computer. Come on, we all been Guys. there. Especially you, lol. <laughs> Respectfully, of course. But nah, nah. like one day, okay. it just it would turn on and get to the login screen, but the desktop would never load. Like no icons, just a blank background. Oops. Ouch. I'm pretty sure it was the Sonic fan games again. Because I really downloaded a lot of them. Right now, though, my current goal, aside from getting, like, a computer I really want to, that at least runs decently high-end shit, I want... I want a fucking... I want a Millennium computer again. I want my old Compaq back. I I gotta do some hunting around, see if I can find something for, like, old retro computer shit like that. <laughs> just, like, considering half of my CD uh, collection here is just mm. older freaking shit that only runs on... Anything with like actual DOS programs, DOS executables on that. Like that one Magic School Bus game with a human body, and that's uh. Where you can the... asphyxiate Arnold. And also, it's just the freaking literal embodiment of my nightmares. Yeah, pre rendered graphics of blood cells and all that jazz. And that MIDI soundtrack that uh, haunts my nightmares every single night. <laughs> like, whoever was doing the composition on that shit, like, kudos to you. It's good compositions, but also fucking terrifies me. Damn it. What have I got? 
That scared me as a kid. Oh, right, Eggs of Steel. Have I told you all about that? I've only, like, seen some bits of that game. It's just, like, this egg, and he works in a factory or something like that. Yeah, uh, one of my cousins in the Bronx had... Well, cousins or uncle, I forget which one. But just the game freaked me out. Like, I was... Like, okay, as we all know, I am autistic. You know, it is April, so, you know, let's... Let's bring... Let's, let's make that more obvious than it already is, you know? But the point is, like, there's just a lot of stuff that's going to freak me out because I didn't understand everything, obviously. Lord knows I still don't today. Damn it, I missed the live that's up there. But yeah, like, just, I don't know, like, the something about the graphics and the weird, evil-looking egg just freaked the fuck out of me as a kid. You know, I can see that given, like, from what I've seen the little bits, that egg does have this very menacing looking face to him. He goes, remember me, Charlie? Yeah, yeah that would freak you out. What other weird things was I scared of? Scared? Oh, uh, I was kind of on and off scared of the Muppets. Yeah, you, you try and figure that one out. Like I would I I like the Muppets, but for some reason I also have nightmares about the Muppets. I also the didn't like it when the I, I, another thing that also freaked me out was oh son of a Jesus Christ, I am so ass at this final room. But another thing that would freak me out as a kid and admittedly still kind of unnerves me in certain contexts is when media would talk directly at you. If you know what I mean? Oh, you mean like, oh, hey, audience. Something kind of like that, I guess you'd say. I'm, just, I'm really struggling to think of a good way to put it. Or, Would it be like, comparable to, like, say, a uh, pretty obvious case, but, like, Flowey and Undertale? Like, uh, no, not like, no, not when it's, like, not in a menacing context, like... Let's say you're playing one of those old interactive CD-ROM games, like, I don't know, Lego Island, for example. Like, in a situation like that where the game would talk to you, the player, because you're a little kid. You know what? Following me here? Uh, yeah, I think I'm getting it. Like, when it's like that and there's no background music or anything and they're just talking directly at you, that would always okay. freak me out. I can kind of get behind this a little bit because I had a situation a bit similar to this though it wasn't from like say a lego island or anything like that no, i was just doing that as an example yeah yeah but like i got one case example of it that i think might match up with what you're going for um all right uh do you remember these this old brand of um uh gay of educational games and like booklets called school zone mm, no Hang on, let me see if I can search up at least a little bit of it, because they were basically just these edutainment kind of games and all that, and the one thing, there was this one called Math 1 and 2. It was a cute little game, but it kind of unnerved me that there was no music in the game whatsoever aside from sudden sound effects and, like, clicking on something and then it would start talking to you. It's just so eerily silent, if you get what I mean. Yes, I absolutely do. Like, I think, okay, I got a good example. I'll, uh, I'll link it to you after the stream. But, yes, you're getting it now. That's what I'm talking about. Fuck. Like, the world's a scary place when you're an autistic kid, let me tell you, folks. It sucks because the game itself is kind of cute, but like, hmm. Ugh. Oh, come on, Bollocks. Hey, at least it wasn't right when Crash was crouching on it, or else he would have gotten his ass blasted from that. <laughs> I 
Okay, I guess I'm not supposed to jump like an idiot. Because I can just wait. Fuck. I was going back to this weird fear of things. Uh, another thing, some... Okay, you know those compilations on YouTube of random videotape intros with all the companies and distributors and whatnot? Yeah. Some of those would also kind of freak me out. But it was more so because they some of them were so loud and sudden. Like, I remember this one for Warner Brothers where it was like... Uh, blue sky back where like, it just... Black then immediately. Is that ringing any bells? Ah, uh, shit. This one's kind of. Uh, blue sky background, and like, you fly through a 3D version of the Wonder Brothers logo, and it's this loud synthy sting. Okay, I vaguely know the one you're talking about, but I think I might be mixing up with the other traditional WB logo from the 2000s. No, this wasn't from the 2000s. This was like, I want to say late 80s, early 90s, because it appeared on a few tapes of, uh, I think it was, a... no, was it police? No, we didn't have any police. Hold on. Oh, you. Mike. Nod your head, yes or no. Did we have any of the police academies on tape as kids? Uh... No, I get. I might be thinking of some other. Oh shit! That was my brother. Everyone, don't expect to hear from him again. But it was some random WB movie where this intro was like just scared the fuck out of me. Again, anything that was just loud and sudden. Also, for some reason, the old Paramount logo. You're just learning a lot about me tonight, aren't you, folks? Well, us, I should say. So, uh, real talk. Would something like, say, the Sonic Adventure logo, Sonic Adventure opening, be uh, in that category? Or is it just like, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm being blasted by my, by my face melting off by the sickest cords ever? It'd be that. Again, If it, it has to be, like, really, really sudden, you know what I mean? Just like a finger snap. With that, there's at least a lead in. The fucking hardest ear melting lead in you've ever heard. <laughs> I love how that's just been a consistent thing across most all the ports for SA1, though. Because even on, like, the PC version and all that, you better turn that shit down a few notches or else your fucking ears are destroyed. There we go. Now I'm playing like a smarty. And fuck, I gotta get out of here. What else freaked me out as a kid? I guess the obvious oh. would be clowns, but we all know how that turned out. Oh. Oh, never mind. Son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, clowns, I eventually overcame that by my own ways, as we all know. What else? What about you? Oh. Um, here's one that was a bit, um, offbeat. No, more so I just didn't really fully understand it, but then eventually it just, like, pushed on through. You remember a game called Jimmy Neutron vs. Jimmy Negatron? Vaguely. It was an old PC game Ooh. by Aw Games. They handled a lot of, like, the PC versions of the SpongeBob games, which weren't actually those games, but they were, like, the, um... <laughs> They were, they were weird just... pointing. They were actually no. They weren't bad. They were pointing clicks, right? Yeah, some were pointing click games. Other one or two of them were mini game compilations, and sometimes they would cross the two of those together here and there. They had some actually pretty good stuff, actually. Um, Ooh, what, what but... happened there? But they also have made two Jimmy Neutron games. One for the movie, and one for the 
that was based on the TV show that was its own original game. Which, funny enough, was also basically kind of the plot to one of the episodes, given it was an evil version of Jimmy. Even though the one in the show was a completely different origin to the one in the game. Oh, damn it! But, in there, there's this part where it's like completely dark... And these things called mummy bots are basically coming at you, and they like wrapped up with like one bulging eye out, and you have to take them out. But like, I think why I go in the dark, it's creepy. And then it's like, oh, what do I do? And then I realized, oh, just move forward and shoot them. They could go down to like three shots, dumbass. <laughs> Oh, oh, speaking of, like, something like that, there was a section in there where you're, like, inside Vox, Jimmy's computer, and you have to take out these virus things. And there's this one virus that's, like, the boss virus, and that thing is legitimately fucking creepy. It's this big insectoid thing that's, like, pulsating and shit, and you have to... Eww, that thing is terrifying. Oh, God, the timing on that. Oh, gee. But at the same time, I, I, I love that game. It was, it was great. It was glitchy as hell, too, but it was great. No! Jump. Wait, what? I had a cool on me. Fuck you, fuck you, dad. That one's not going nowhere. I gotta stop. Fuck off, fuck off. I better not ask that question because that's going to lead to something else. I don't know what that was, but. What uh, was the weirdest thing I gave you a boner as a kid? But let's not go that way. We don't need to talk about that. That's more of a podcast topic. Look, let's save that when I can rant endlessly about Elastic Girls and then I can also have drawn up plenty of various, uh, various questionable things of Mally in various poses. Yeah, sorry, y'all. You'll have to wait for E Town Night to see that one. And that thing better be spelled all capitals with a lowercase i, I swear to god. No, 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 it's night. It's nights like the Baywatch logo where we just impose knights over our logo and it's in like a swishy font. Eh, fair point. You ever seen Baywatch Knights? It's insane. Can't say I have. Alright. Well, okay, so you know what Baywatch is, right? In concept? Um, like lifeguards and all that. Uh, David Hasselhoff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, now here's what Baywatch Nights is. Okay, you bring in David Hasselhoff and a few ancillary, ancillary characters, you know, like side guys and whatnot. Okay, you follow me? Yeah. And you turn them into a detective. Okay. Like, okay, that's, you're, you're thinking, okay, that's not too dissimilar from a regular Baywatch, because there were some elements of mystery in some episodes. Hold on. Hold on to that right now, because guess what? You know what else happens in Baywatch Nights? 
Aliens. Aliens. Ghosts. Uh, 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 supernatural sorry, bullshit in general. And it's all played completely straight. No irony at all. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> you heard me? It's... Like... It, like, it, it, they wanted to be... Basically, they didn't know what the show wanted... They, they really didn't know what the show wanted to be because they thought, oh, hey, how... Like, they thought, you know, X-File... Okay, let me get my thoughts straight. Originally, it was supposed to be a detective. More detective-y. You know, that's fine. You know, turn into a Miami Vice or whatever. Maybe a Magnum P.I. But I guess they saw the popularity of the X-Files growing and they were like, fuck it, let's rip off that. And it just ah, becomes so, insane. I see. So it's like late 90s, early 2000s. I, well, that's uh There's a great vi wow. there's a great video series by uh I forgot what she's calling herself now. She used to be Obscure Lupa, but that's not her name anymore because I think she abandoned that. But she's been doing this on and off series where she looks at random episodes of Baywatch Nights and it is Look, people, I told you. Fucking David Hasselhoff fighting ghosts in some episodes and aliens in others and playing it completely is... straight. I'm just surprised at how that is crazier than the than, than David Hasselhoff just appearing out of nowhere in the SpongeBob movie. Well, that you can make the through line through. You you can make the connection because, you know, Beach, Baywatch, Spongebob is aquatic, etc, etc. You know, a joke for the adults. Yeah. Come on, come on. I always remember that around that time for the movie tie-in games, they had to censor saying uh, Hasselhoff's name because they didn't have the rights to his likeness. So they had to get around it through various ways, like... Instead of saying the Hasselhoff, it'll say the ah! the dude the dolphin sensor noise. I remember one of them. They're like, they made some kind of joke where he's like, "Are you a lifeguard?" But he's like, "No, but I played one on TV." Yeah, that was actually the PS2 game with the cutscene right before the rematch against Dennis. And I love how. <laughs> It just comes off as some really weird swear word if you don't know the context, but you do know the context of like the dolphin, the dolphin noises. Especially when when you talk with Mindy on the Planktopolis level, and then SpongeBob goes, "I didn't write the ah for nothing," and then Mindy goes, "What's the ah?" Wow. Oh, that is fucking great. SpongeBob said, "Cock." That game kicks ass on, like, real talk. Um, a lot of people talk about, like, Bowser Bikini Bottom, and that game's great, but for my money, I think the movie game is honestly even better. As someone who had to endure... Oh, fuck. fuck. Son of a bitch. As someone who in, had to endure the Flying Dutchman's Revenge as his first Spongebob game, y'all were lucky. Then again, my actual first first SpongeBob game ever was Damn. Operation Krabby Patty on the PC. Either way, you're lucky because at least your game didn't crash so often that you had to save outside of every room. Yeah, that is true. I always remember hearing about that and specifically that was, that was a oh fuck 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 that was a PS2 glitch. But I think in general, the all versions of the game just have bad loading. All versions of that have bad loading, but it's the PS2 version that kind of ended up k killing them because they only made one other game, the movie tie-in for Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron, Neutron, which also has the same kind of weird, surreal kind of. It's it, there's supposed to be a license, like it's still kind of early in the franchise, so they're still kind of feeling some some, some things out. Yeah, yeah. What's even crazier is that Balf, that creature, f no, creature from the Crusty Crabs later on. Um, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Revenge of the Flying Dutchman didn't, was that one of the few games where they actually had Clancy Brown voicing? I believe um, so. 
I know how they managed to get him to voice that, and also one off one of the offbeat PC games here and there, and yet we couldn't get him to voice in the the big two PS2 games. Get, 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 get. No, they couldn't even get him back to voice to get a chance to voice uh, Mr. Krabs in the remake and rehydrate. Oh. Sucks. Well, in fairness, I think they were just reusing old, all the old audio in general. Or whatever. Eh, fair. I guess I Mr. Think... I guess maybe... Who knows? Maybe Mr. Krabs is truer to Clan. Maybe Clancy's truer to Mr. Krabs than we expect. If you want his voice, you're going to have to pay up. Alright, how much more we got? Oh, you want to talk about a glitches in Spongebob games? There's this one specific one in um, Operation Krabby Patty where if you move at the wrong angle, you can end up being stuck in like the background of the stage because all the section because the whole game basically plays um, 3D models on a 2D background. Is this Super it Sponge? No, but it did come out the same year as Super Sponge different developers though but um you can get stuck in the background if you move a little bit your mouse a little bit too fast and so like i got stuck at one point i just didn't know what to do i was behind the crusty crab and like spongebob just wouldn't move i couldn't i couldn't fucking move around so i had to restart the whole ass stage in order to freaking try it again Botch. Uh, do I have any notable glitches I've found on my own? Uh, oh, I got one. Uh, you ever play Hit Simpsons Hit and Run? Ironically, I played uh, Road, Road Rage. Rage. That was the one that we had. Anyways, I remember there was a glitch in the first... Okay, so in Simpsons Hit and Run, each stage is with a different member of the Simpsons family. And in the first stage where you're playing as Homer... Uh, okay, I should also explain that. Okay, there's two versions of one stage. Homer's first and last stage. Uh, this... Uh, uh, man, my stutter's getting worse, dog. Okay, so basically, in the first stage, you're able to glitch into Mr. Burns' mansion. Well, you... Okay, uh... If I'm remembering this correct, basically you would have, you could force yourself into Mr. Burns' mansion, which isn't playable in that stage, but it is later on in the game when you come back to that stage as Homer, because I guess they share collision data or something. Huh. So I remember just being able to drive around the Outlands and like somehow one of like the dummy NPC characters would just spawn. And I wasn't much of a glitch hunter, but I was able to find that one. Ooh, you want to talk about actually one that was a kind of cool glitch I managed to find? Um, when I was playing Sonic 06 and I collected all the custom gems, you know about the one that's purple that causes Sonic to be tiny and just gain infinite jumps, right? No, because I never played Sonic 06. Alright, fair point. But like, <laughs> there's the final boss against Eggman on the Egg Wyvern, and... I actually decided, oh hey, I want to check out some of the actual background and scenery to the place. So I used that gem to just hmm. fl float on over to the other parts of the egg carrier. And I find out that one section of the egg carrier actually has collision on it. Ah. It's this little docking bay over to the far far uh, bottom side of the carrier where you're actually fighting him and it's just like okay i can actually stand on this like i don't know how i don't know why this is never used in any cutscene or anything in the game uh, it's just there Oh my god. Let's see anything else. Fuck off! Uh. Ooh. What have I got? What have I got? Oh, but 
well, one of my favorite glitches, period. <sighs> so. No. Shit, I lost my train of thought. Granted, I, I was talking about my favorite glitch. The one would be the fucking the Taka Arashi glitch in Virtual Fighter 3. Oh yeah, where you just go to the edge of ah uh, no. Duh! You absolute son of a bitch. Unfortunately, this does not go by Sonic CD rules, and we do not get a mini crash. So we might as well get the other pack stage out of the way. But yeah, Takarashi glitch on Shundi stage. Whenever me and Frosty play VF3, it's just like it's a race to it see now. who can do it first. Yeah. Sometimes both of us playing as Takarashi to make it go happen even faster. Poor guy got left out of Retro Fighter 4 because he glitched three. Hey, he got back in five. Yes, do what you will, but Virtua Fire only had one character that just sat one game out, and then boom, he's back in the back in the next game. Uh, hmm. No, I don't know enough about Virtua Fire to say if he counts. Cause I know there was one guy that was in some version of Virtua Fighter Four. His name was John or something. No. Oh! Jean Cujo? Yeah. Actually, if I recall, he returned in Final Showdown? Or, uh, Final or Ultimate Showdown 5. Come on, come on, go, go, go! Uh. Fuck you! Fuck you! God, I wish I knew what causes that Mendefin skip. Get it, get it, get it! God dang it! Oh, actually, I just mirrored one glitch that was just the fucking best. Lego Star Wars 2. Um, did you know that you can actually make it so that you actually play as the cars themselves that you can ride on in there? And not just like, oh, hey, it's just the, um, you riding the car, you are actually playing the car itself. No, I don't think you ever told me. Okay, so, this only works, by the way, with the original version on PS2 and, like, Wii, or, I don't know if it was on Wii, but it, I know it was on GameCube. But the original version of LEGO Star Wars 2, not the complete saga, <sighs> what you have to do is you have to find a rideable vehicle, and then you need to find a pit you can jump off of. What you then need to do is jump at the same time, jump off the vehicle at the same time as the as the um thing itself is falling, and then the game will get confused on what to load in. So it then instead loads you as the freaking um. Oh. <laughs> My plan is nearly complete, and I have you, Crash Bandicoot, to thank for. Engine? What's happening? What's that? Is he stealing our signal? He's getting replaced by the guy who voices Goemon. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I want crystals. Oh, we got him. Crystals okay. For my... Let's end this shit. Going up. 
But yeah, I was so my world was rocked when I found out the current voice for Cortex is also going on because that is some impressive range. Um, is he the same voice actor that was voicing um, Cor Cortex since like Twin Sanity and all that? Yeah, Ian something or other, I believe his yeah. name is. Because, like, with Clancy Brown, you can kind of tell when a character's voiced by Clancy Brown. Because even though he has good range himself, it's like, you know, you can tell. Damn, come on, hit him! Wait. Come on! What the crap? Why did nothing hit him? Actually, isn't it just like you just gotta keep moving forward and just hit him? There we go, okay. Ugh. Damn it, come no, on. Honestly, it's... I think it's actually a lot more complex than it is, but then you find out, oh, hey, I just have to... I just have to there we go. Punch. I just got punched no! Cortex in the face and that's it. You haven't seen the last of me, Crash Bandicoot. But this franchise has. Crash, what do you suppose happened to Cortex? And what about the Cortex Vortex? It's still up there. I guess we'll never find out. All right, well, that's another game done and dusted. Christ alive, how did I blast through those last few rooms? Well, I fuck up on this one. Anyways, good job, Gavin and Baggett. Lavi the second. John Cutry. Mr. Pearson. Cunt Cerny. Mick Ready. <laughs> okay, yeah, these jokes aren't going on. Let's just... Okay, so... Yeah, Crash Bandicoot 2. It's uh, done and done. But we still got some time left. Hmm. What to do, what to do. This is a bit, obviously. Just give me a moment, folks, because uh, in a moment, we just crashed. But now... It'll be time to blast. Nothing, huh? Just gonna let that one sit? Uh, I, this blast could mean literally a million things. I can think of two things off the top of my head. What well, are those two things? Anton and Blast? Oh, alright, alright. Okay, I see where this is going now. I'll be brutally honest, I thought you meant either Sonic Blast or Sonic Robo Blast 2. Okay, right. I don't know, actually, yeah, hold on, let me just... Okay, let me... Let me just... Let me this tweet. Okay. 
Tweet. I, mean, I should really pay someone to do these tweets for me. Or a smarter person would actually have everything ready to go from the jump. I am not that person. But anyways, yes. Last week we played with our balls. But now it's time to blast. To blast. That's right, it's more Anton goodness, and it's even more str more Anton goodness, more Wario land in our world. We have Pepino and we have Anton, we're gonna be okay, folks. I do know there's a third one that Miles mentioned, but I never heard of that one, so whatever. Yes, this is Anton Blast, the sequel. What the? Ugh. That's light. There we go. The sequel to Anton Ball. Uh, this is actually the demo for the Kickstarter, which has long since been a thing, but thankfully it's all funded, so you know, it's okay to be late. All that matters is that y'all are gonna get more Warrior Line goodness in the world, and isn't that a good thing? Not like Nintendo's gonna do anything about it. I was actually talking about this with 8 the other day, just... If we're not going to have uh, freaking the Nintendo but at least doing anything with the franchises like this, or at the very least, just we're going to keep that franchise stuck to a single thing like that, at the very least, other, other developers are going to pick up the pieces on that and just take their own creative spins on it. Oh, if you want to get to there, you're going to have to do the roll on, like, the escape section, and manage to nail it. Ooh, actually, I think you probably should have kept that on, but... Actually, uh, wait. Well, yeah, I think late. maybe... Now, that's something Nintendo will never touch. Referencing Wario Land Virtual Boy. Only Anton, baby. I still remember seeing one of the um, parts of the new version of the combo counter where it has a reference to the Play It Loud um, advertisement. Yeah. Damn, I'm so dumb. Also, I'm happy uh, to have found out that Anne is also going to be playable in here, because Chaos Gremlin, babe. Man, I am playing this game poorly. Anton would rightfully take the piss out of me for it. You aren't being ballsy enough. At least I remember that secret. Have you, uh, have you actually played any of, like, Pizza Tower yet, or? Uh, no, I haven't. But I have a take about Pizza Tower. Not that it's bad or anything, but this feels way more like Wario Land than Pizza Tower. Like, Pizza Tower is obviously taking inspiration. But, like, this is, this just feels like Wario Land 5 to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. One's taking a lot more direct inspiration with some other new ideas. Hey, and you know, that's I not a bad is... thing either, what Pizza yeah. Tower's doing. Pizza Tower at the same time also is playing a bit more on, like, the speed and the thrill of, like, a lot of the, a lot of, like, the escape scenes and all the different transformations and power-ups. And honestly, I think that is a very valid approach. And honestly, just makes it makes it gives it its own unique identity aside from just being ah, it's just 
Waru is just Wario, another Wario Land type game. Not to say that this game doesn't have any of that because clearly it, it it's does. It's, its own. right there. Exactly. Like they have nailed a Game Boy look, Advance look. Like it's about time too, because it's like everyone's either going eight bit or sixteen bit, and I'm fine with that. But you know, like, what about in between, folks? Oops. There's this aesthetic of games from the 2000s that are just a very, a very unique taste, you know? Whether it be the ones that were on the Game Boy or PS2. And it's nice to see at least some people are uh, taking up that uh, era as influence, you know? Mm hmm. No, ah, ah, bollocks. Ah, you can also taste that crash in there, too, you know. That, and I'm pretty sure using the crate sounds as placeholders. Yeah, but I also did mention that they mentioned uh, Crash was also a uh, Yeah, big uh, one too. Like, this is Wario Land and Crash, basically. Because, like, with, P okay, with Pizza Tower, it's like Wario and Sonic, a little bit. This is Wario and Crash, at least in my eyes. Damn it! Basically, like the Crash GBA games, which those games are actually pretty good. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Wow, I am so bad at games tonight. All right. Let's do this thing right. Now we're Anton blasting. That being said, though, uh, me trying to P-rank anything in Pizza Tower is a literal fucking... Take a, it's gonna take a literal fucking miracle. As high as I can get is a fucking A-rank. There we go. Damn it. There we go. <clears throat> I also just noticed that the fucking sewer lids have pentagrams on them. Well, we are fighting against the devil in this one. If I had a nickel for every single Wario-inspired protagonist that fights a demonic beings, I'd have two, two nickels. nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened more than once. Ah, bollocks. Well, then again, I never claim to be a pro gamer anyways. Yeah, pro gamer. Pro game. I mean, we are. E Town is a. V I think it's safe to say E Town is very left. If y'all can't handle that, don't fucking leave, Jabroni. I don't want you to ask watching us. We're progressive here. Just wait until we play Disco Elysium. Well, we are going to be so obnoxious with that one. <laughs> then again, I don't think you know that one, do you? Sadly, I do not, but if you want me being gay, uh, I can easily talk about how much I have a crush on Nightcrawler. Sure. Why not? Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, whatever. I blame X-Men Evolution. He was fucking adorable in there. Also, when the fuck are we gonna get him as a mod in fucking uh, Marvel vs. Cap for all the mods for Marvel vs. Capcom 3? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone good. wants to focus on bringing in the prior characters from other, the other verses. I mean, true, but at the same time, Nightcrawler. At least we've gotten some characters that should have been in there Come from the start, like fucking Carnage. Carnage should have been fucking MVC3 from the beginning. <laughs> Carnage and Venom, mm. but then again. If you're gonna have anyone that's like, oh, we're gonna have a new character and not just, like, uh, bring back the old ones. You put Carnage in the game! Mm. Hmm. I don't know, some kind of other Spider-Man villain. We never had any actual proper spider NBC just is really lacking with fucking Spider-Man characters. Cause they want more cause Ooh, we'll do that again. Okay then. Uh, son of a bitch! I think if I think you just dash there, I think it'd be good to cross that. Oh, or... or that actually that works even better. And that's even even better, better. Son of a bitch! But yeah, I know that uh, Capcom and Marvel more focuses on uh, the Jim Lee era X Men, along with say the uh, Avengers and all that, more general Marvel superiors. But at the same time. Mm -hmm. Come on! Tell me you couldn't at least have gotten fucking more than just Venom in there. And look, I am I uh, an apologetic Venom fanboy here, but like, come on. Yeah, you know, the problem is they always want the more recognizable characters. If I remember correctly, they had to really fight Tooth and Nail to put in Deadpool. That's surreal to me, given Deadpool's popularity. Well, this was when he... Well, this was before he really hit it off of the LOL So Random crowd. Mm. I think this was just right before it really hit for him. Damn it. I would think at the very least we could have Hano have one of the freaking Spider-Man villains that are at least more noble for their rainy appearances, like say Octavius or Osborne. I was actually talking about this the other day. Fucking imagine uh Osborne and freaking Norman in a Marvel game and he has a super that is him calling out his glider and swooping in but if you miss it then freaking um it can impale you and kill you instantly it'd be comic accurate
Ah. Ooh. Well, he's had a sense of such here. I just realized that the freaking wrecking balls have eyeballs on them. What the hell was that? Damn it, wasting my time. Oh well. And that's where we're gonna put it for now. Hell yeah. Let's get the hell out of here. Ah, oh boy, what a night of bad video game playing on my part. I just <sighs> said, you're just rusty. It takes a bit of time to get back in the groove of things. Oh. Yeah, still, if Anton was real, he'd be ripping the piss out of me well good. But, oh uh, well, just wait until you see me fuck up a Spelunky next week. <laughs> oh, boy, that's going to be laughing half. But that'll do it for us for here. That'll do it for us here at E-Town Live. Robo, you got anything you want to say before we close out? Nah, nothing. Aside from putting you on blast. We're playing with the balls. Uh, oh, my jokes are shitty and uh, you want to pardon me. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I was Eric. That was Robo. We'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll have my new last name by then. But until then, be safe, stay healthy, stay positive. And always stay exciting. I really gotta think. I really need to figure out a good opening and closing line. Whatever. Good night, everybody.